PDP caucus backs Damagum to continue as acting national chair. Yahya Bello absent as EFCC mulls military's help to fish him out. House of Reps again postpone resumption to now resume April the 30th. And on the foreign scene, Burkina Faso expels three French diplomats for subversive activities. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Shegun Ojumu. <music> Chairman of the PDP Governors Forum, Governor Bala Mohamed of Bochi State, has said that only the national executive uh, neck of the People's Democratic Party will decide whether to remove or retain Umar Damagum as the acting national chairperson of the party. Governor Mohammed said the decision to appoint a new leader of the party will be determined by pending litigations and that the party is mindful not to create opportunities for factions. The report. The governor disclosed this on Wednesday while addressing journalists after a closed-door meeting of the governors at the Akwaibom State Governor's Lodge, Asokoro Abuja. Mohammed stressed the forum under his leadership will not tolerate any form of faction in the party. NEC will take decision on such issues, not the governors. I know the governors normally take the leadership position, but we have an acting person in capacity, in acting capacity leading the, the party. And so NEC will decide whether it is time to take the acting, uh, to, to fill in the vacancy, looking at the legal implication of doing that, knowing that there are so many lingering litigation issues in court. And of course, we don't want to disparage ourselves because we are aware there are some marauders hiding somewhere trying to factionalize our party and take one person to go and do coalition. We are not going to allow that as governors. We are very responsible and we are very credible. We will make sure that we resolve all the issues and unify the party for maximum efficiency and, uh, of course, success in the next election. Thank you. 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 The chairman of the PDP Governors Forum maintained that all the lingering issues surrounding the leadership of the party has been resolved. He assured that Thursday's meeting of the party's neck will conduct in line with the constitutional provision of the party. The meeting reviewed recent developments in the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and asked the National Working Committee of the party to set in motion the machinery to conduct credible congresses in all the states where tenures of the party offices have expired. Two, the meeting noted that there are no factions in the PDP and everybody is working together, united with all the stakeholders and all the organs of the party. Three, we equally want to use this opportunity to affirm that in River State, the governor will work assiduously was resolving all issues in the state with a view to uniting all the stakeholders. Damagung was appointed as the acting chairperson of the PDP following the suspension of the former chairman, Yocha Ayu. Justice Emeka Mwite of the Federal High Court Abuja has adjourned a suit instituted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, against the immediate past governor of Kogi State, Yahya Bello, to April the 23rd. The adjournment is for substituted service and possible arraignment of Bello for alleged 84 billion naira money laundering. At the resumed certain counsel for the EFCC, Kemi Finro told the court that the immediate past governor of Kogi State was absent from court for his arraignment because he was being protected by someone with immunity. Mr. Finro, who noted that the former governor was whisked out of his Abuja residence by the same person with immunity said the anti-graft agency might seek the help of the military to flush him out. Meanwhile, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagwemi SAN, has called on Mr. Bello to the past decency and submit himself for probe. Mr. Bello is being wanted by the EFCC over alleged corrupt practices while in office as governor of Kogi State. According to the AGF, in a statement he personally signed on Thursday, the FCC is empowered by law to invite any Nigerian for interrogation. Meanwhile, the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Hurewa, has called on former governor of Kogi State, Yahya Bello, 
to submit himself immediately to the scrutiny of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in light of ongoing investigations into alleged financial impropriety. Mr. Bello's reluctance to cooperate, Furiwa asserted, risks not only undermining the rule of law, but also perpetuating an image of impunity that tarnishes Nigeria's international reputation. In a statement, Furiwa emphasized the fundamental principle of accountability that underpins any functioning democracy. While urging Mr. Bello to heed the summons of the EFCC, Furiwa also commended the current administration of President Bola Tinubu for refraining from overt political interference in the investigative activities of the anti-graft agency. It cautioned against complacency, noting that the handling of Mr. Bello's case will serve as a litmus test for the government's sincerity in its anti-corruption crusade. Huriwa urged the EFCC to refrain from turning legitimate law enforcement activities into theatrical theatrical uh, spectacles reminiscent of Nollywood movies, noting that such theatrics not only undermine the seriousness of the anti-corruption fight, but also risks trivializing the very uh, real harm caused by corruption to ordinary Nigerians. A federal high court in Kano has restrained executive members of APC Ganduje Ward and Dawakin Tofa local government area from further action on the suspension of the APC national chairman Abdullahi Umar Ganduje. Justice Abdullahi Liman granted an interim order directing all respondents from implementing or giving effect to the suspension of Ganduje after a decision was reached during an emergency meeting of the executive members of APC Ganduje Ward on April the 15th, pending the hearing and determination of fundamental rights of fee hearing filed by the APC national chairman before the court. The court also directed parties to maintain status quo before the emergency meeting of the APC executive members of Ganduje Ward and to stay all action in respect of this matter pending the hearing and determination of the application. Justice Lehman fixed April the 30th for hearing in the matter. Next, the House of Representatives Committee on Corporate Social Responsibility has cautioned multinational and private companies undermining its operations in their host communities. Chairman of the committee, Obi Urogu, stated this on Wednesday during an investigative meeting with all companies on the implementation of the corporate social responsibility. Mrs. Lillian, while noting, uh, while noting that the intention of the committee is not to witch hunt any company, but rather to investigate several petitions coming from their host community. Uh, communities, as you say, she urged their companies to carry out their operations with all sense of responsibility while stressing that the, um, that the committee will embark on an oversight to ascertain the several uh, petitions raised by the host communities. The companies invited were Shell and Chevron, amongst others. We have come to the stage where we're coming to see these projects. You see why I said we are coming to see these projects? You have already claimed, and you are on oath, that these projects were executed. And this is the reason why we want to see the MD, so that when the MD is talking here, he's on oath. You know the implication. You know the legal implication of being on oath and telling lies or giving false information. Let me not use telling lies. Giving for providing false information to an investigative committee of the National Assembly. We didn't invite you here on our own. We invited these companies because there are petitions against the operations, the activities of the multinational companies the uh, private companies in their host communities. I'm surprised you're even saying that the, the, you have uh, started uh, uh, implementing the PIA. Would want to see it. But don't make us look as if we're witch hunting anybody. Nobody's witch hunting you. But if we find out that your company has become a troublesome company to this committee, we are we with everything I have, the committee, we read all it has, we did its powers, 
to fight back. Professors of some Nigerian universities and other professionals detained in Cameroon have petitioned the House of Representatives to intervene on their behalf. Addressing journalists on the petition, a former member of the House of Representatives, Abdul Shuaib Oro, reiterated the call on President Bola Tinubu led federal government to employ diplomatic and political measures to ensure the release of the detainees. The petitioners numbering 10 also called on the president to deploy other means to secure their release from detention by the Cameroonian authorities. They were arrested at the Nira Hotel in Abuja on January 5, 2018 by security agents and later repatriated to Cameroon, where they were tried by a military tribunal and sentenced to life imprisonment on allegations of plotting to destabilize the government of President Paul Bia. In their petition, the asylum seekers in Nigeria pleaded with the House to, among others, cause the government of Nigeria to institute an urgent action to secure the release. So we are appealing to him, we are appealing to our parliament, elected by our people, by the will, the sovereign will of the Nigerian people, to intervene with the uh, Cameroon authorities to release these people so that maybe they can go into a, 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 a conversation to negotiate peace, because these people are interested in peace. So that their refugees can return home, everything. So that their people can have peace. You know? And, you know, you cannot negotiate with somebody who is not free. This petition today was not about arguing the citizenship of our clients. This petition today is not about talking about Nigeria interfering in the internal affairs of another country. This petition is to come to Nigeria and ask to Nigerians through their legislature and through the judiciary has already done that. The judiciary has already said, listen, hey, how could you do this? Because in three different decisions, the federal high court here in Abuja where we're standing today has said your arrest was illegal, unconstitutional, and illegitimate. And they did not stop there. They said, bring them back and compensate them. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has again postponed its resumption of plenary from Tuesday, April the 23rd to Tuesday, April the 30th. This is the second time the House is postponing its resumption from the Easter and Salah breaks. The House was initially scheduled to resume plenary on Tuesday, April the 16th, but was shifted to April the 23rd to allow for the completion of renovation work on the main chambers of the House. However, clerk to the House, Yahya Anzaria, said in an internal memo to the lawmakers that a new adjustment is aimed at giving members more time for constituency outreach to secure adequate input in the constitutional review process. Spokesman of the House, Akin Tunde Rotimi, quoted the clerk as saying that the extension follows the earlier decision by the House Committee on Constitution Review to extend the deadline for submission of memoranda to April 30th. 2024. Let's take you now to Delta State, where the State Commissioner of Police there, Olufemi Abaniwanda, has warned content creators, vloggers, YouTubers, and TikTokers against posting uncertified videos capable of causing instability in the country. Commissioner Abaniwanda gave the warning at a media briefing in Asaba, the state capital. The commissioner expressed dissatisfaction with creators who post videos without minding the consequences. He stated that when, other, when videos and other content are misleading, it poses danger to the stability of the nation. Plead again, like I pleaded the last time. Before we share, we post, and before we do anything on social media, our appeal is this. Please double check, corroborate, and confirm that what you are sharing and what you are sending out for the generality of our people is the truth. It has been verified. Unverified videos will only cause panic within our populace. We plead again that before you share, please confirm that it is authentic and it is the truth. 
next to Lagos, where the state government there is planning to partner with the Ogun state government on the extension of the Blue Rail Line further down to Agbara. The Director of Rail Transport, Lagos Metropolitan Area Transportation Authority, or Lasukomi Ukusaga, disclosed this on Tuesday in Lagos while inspecting the ongoing construction of the Blue Line Phase 2 project. Mr. Kusaga expressed satisfaction with the progress achieved so far and revealed ongoing discussions with the Ogun State Government to further to extend, I should say, the blue line further to Agbara. The project has been handled by the China Civil Engineering Construction Corporation. Still in Lagos, nurses under the ages of the Nigerian nurses and midwives have urged the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria to focus on improving rather than revising the guidelines for certificate verification. The nurses stated this during a peaceful protest in Lagos. The report. Following the directives of the House of Representatives on February 27, 2024, to the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria to suspend the implementation of their recently revised guidelines for certificate verification, the nurses have accused the Council of not adhering to the directives of the House. Speaking on behalf of the nurses during a protest at the Lagos State House of Assembly, the group's Lagos State Coordinator, Thomas Abiodun, said the institution has ignored the directives of the National Assembly to revert to the status quo. We want the uh, association to also stand up in defense of nurses instead of coercing us. These uh, verification guidelines with stringent rules is just um, an act of human rights violation. You cannot beat a child and still detect to the child how to react. There are different responses to pain. Let us express our pain. Let us express ourselves. Let us let us let the Nigerian people know how we feel. Because as nurses, we are going through a lot. There are lots of nurses that are un unemployed. There are not lots of nurses that are still employed, but not being well paid. Some of us cannot even fend for our families well. Yet, we are being made to go through episodes of psychological trauma, both by the uh, Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria, the Federal Government of Nigeria, and our own association. The federal government should meet the plights and the demands of nurses. In regards to their verification, it should not be more than 24 hours. In regards to their enumeration, it should commensurate with the indices, economic indices in Nigeria. They should, they should, they should look into nurses' education and provide grants to nurse to study and also as well to provide a, a better working condition for nurses both in private and public sector. The Nigerian government should also help us to, to sort this out. The, 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 if, even, even if, um, like so many people actually, as at the moment, some people may not have the resources to travel out of Nigeria. But I know in the nearest future, a whole lot of people will be wanting to make that move. So for those ones that are not moving out now, there should be remuneration, good job remuneration and incentives. They urge the council to reverse the status quo as directed by the National Assembly so as not to be seen as a body that does not obey institutions of government. This is the news update on Trust TV coming up after the break. Bauchi farmers commend efforts to address Keller birds attack. More news after the breaks. Welcome back and if you're just joining us, this is Trust TV News Update. Let's take a look at our top stories again, shall we? PDP caucus backs Damagum to continue as acting national chair. Yahya Bello absent as EFCC Mall's militaries help to fish him out.
Fisher farmers in Bauchi State have commended the efforts of the state and federal government in the fight against Calibert's attack in the state. The farmers made the commendation while speaking to Trust TV amidst preparation of the 2024 farming season. Trust TV's Adamu Imam completes the report. As part of concerted effort to address the menace of Calibert's attack, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture has assured farmers in the Northeast region of adequate supply of pesticide in order to protect their farm produce from crops pests. According to the Bauchi State Government, the sum of 45 million naira has been approved for the procurement of agrochemicals in response to the recent outbreak of insects and pests in farmlands across some local government areas. So efforts have been made even from the uh, crop protection department to ensure that they too are, 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 are controlled in order to protect our crops and to uh, further prevent further spread to the other areas. For now, it was reported that it's in case local government and Galeria and part of the farm there to prevent the spread of other local government. The federal government is making efforts to ensure that they control the right there and then. One to one, like the direct uh, representative, the minister, has already emphasized the birds that will be dropping and falling down as a result of that chemical should not be eaten, should not be consumed at all, even by dogs. Don't allow your pets and animals or even human beings to eat uh, those birds. Reacting to the development, some farmers in the state appreciated the effort, saying it's timely. Any effort geared towards tackling this quella bat is a welcome development because those notorious bats just appear and disappear. If the federal government can control them using the right approach, it will help in securing our food crops. We don't know where they usually come from to destroy our farms. We pray for better results to enable us achieve the desired objective so that we can be dependent through agriculture. The ministries say the move was to ensure timely and effective control of the outbreak, noting that scientists have estimated that 2 million quella birds can destroy 20 tons of grains in just 24 hours. However, they announced that the spray of agrochemicals will be conducted through aerial and ground control within the nine local government areas of the state. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. The federal government has announced that the $3.8 billion brass methanol project is to be executed in May 2024. The gas supply and purchase agreement will support the final investment decision of the federal government. The Minister of State Petroleum Resources and its gas, Iperipe Epo, announced the execution date for the gas supply agreement in Abuja on Wednesday after a meeting with key stakeholders of the project in his office. The brass methanol project is a major industrial project being built in Bielsa State to produce methanol, a key industrial chemical using natural gas resources. Nigeria currently imports all its methanol. Away from the shores, uh, Burkina Faso's military government has expelled three French diplomats, accusing them of subversive activities. The diplomats, including two political advisers, were given 48 hours to leave the country. The specifics of their alleged activities were not disclosed. The move further strains relations between Burkina Faso and France since the military junta take, uh, took power in 2022. The junta has previously expelled French troops, recalled the French ambassador, and suspended some French media outlets. Sources suggest the expulsion may be related to meetings the diplomats had with civil society members. Haiti on Tuesday announced new transitional council members in the capital, Port-au-Prince. The council will be tasked with choosing the country's next prime minister and cabinet and is expected to soon trigger the resignation of Prime Minister Ariel Henry. A new provision said Henri could step down when a new premier is chosen. Following the announcement of the names of members of the council overnight Tuesday, some residents in the capital responded with 
cautious optimism. The council's creation came exactly a month and one day after Caribbean leaders announced plans to help form the nine-member panel with seven members awarded voting powers. Okay, Juventus has been ordered to pay Portuguese star Cristiano Ronaldo 9.7 million euros in back wages for the 2021 season. The court of arbitration to which Ronaldo appealed said the sum equates to the difference between the salary actually received by Ronaldo and that which he should have received after tax and other deductions. Ronaldo, who spent three seasons in Italy with Juventus before joining Manchester United, and then the Saudi club Al Nasser was claiming 19.5 million euros, but the arbitration panel reduced that by 50%. Juventus is yet to react to the court ruling. And with that, we've come to the end of news update on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across all our media platforms for more news, programs, and documentaries. I am Shegun Ojemu. Thanks for watching.